there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Are you ready for this unveiling? <laughs> Check out the uh, platforms. Are those not the most... Is that Madonna or what? <laughs> mm, what do you think? Very nice, Jerry. <laughs> not too bad for 74. Oh, a kiss on the hand, lady. But diamonds are a girl's best friend. As long as I'm able to, to get to that bathroom and get to my makeup mirror and my makeup and honey, I'm gonna be pumping this hair and spraying it, putting on that makeup. And yes, ma'am. I don't intend to go out of here looking like no cotton picking old hag. And I, yes, I want to look nice. It's because all those years of having to live as a man and wanting to uh, buy pretty clothes, dress up, wanting to just be me, and I couldn't. <laughs> partner, but I can dance. Hey, hombre, what are you doing in a place like this, baby? Mm. You come to see Chiquita? Yes. <laughs> Stop it. You know, like a Conchita, I kill you. You Yankee pig. 
spot on you tickler stuff. Okay. <laughs> there was the time that I met this guy at the disco who was dressed up like John Wayne. And he was so masculine and so fine. And we just hit it off really well. And I just thought, oh, I had just struck gold. So anyway, um, somehow we ended up at his motel room. Yes, he was wearing ladies' undergarments and he was throwing himself on the bed and hollering, spank me. Oh. And, and do all kinds of terrible. He, he, he was in just some kind of weird scene, and so I got, I got out of there real quick and went home. Two of my four sons reside here with me. We lived apart for several years, and you know, after my ex had passed away, they, um, I talked them into selling the house and moving with me and we would be back together like a family again so you know and it's worked out pretty well it gets a little trying sometimes but um it helps that i'm on one end of the house and they're on the other so we I, I have a certain degree of privacy and um but other than that we, we just uh, we bicker and we fuss and we argue and uh but we love each other and uh we are we're very supportive Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for this food and for the privilege of sharing all of this together, the joy and the sorrow, the good food, the laughter, another day together, and we pray for many more to come. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, yes. What was it Jean Harlow said? Uh, I'm going to slip into something more comfortable. <laughs> okay. Pantyhose. Oh, they've come out with pantyhose for men now. It's not easy being transgender. Every day, it's a challenge. You can use all the willpower you have to try to to keep this in the shadows at some point it's going to come out in the open and you cannot find it oh what women have to go through oh. mm. by the time i decided to do something i was in my late 30s i had four small children i had to confront the wife and go through the divorce, change jobs, start a whole new way of life. Okay. Oh, did I tell you I used to be a hairdresser and cosmetologist for about six years? Oh, yes. Um, school teacher, nine years. An accountant. I've done everything but be a stripper. I haven't tried that yet. I'm not real good about swinging around poles. The doctors in Jackson at that time, none of them were treating transgender people, and they didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want anything to do with it. But the surgery was always uppermost in my mind. I struggled for years to raise the money because I was helping support my four children. And then I sought out a reputable surgeon in Brussels, Belgium, at that time, I was 60 years old. Okay. I started out with nothing, no money, no resources. It seems like a miracle that I actually was able to finally achieve at this. Okay. It's off to face the cruel world.
I guess I thought when I got to the age I'm at, it's just I thought, I don't know, that I would have done more. And um, I haven't, and it just kind of makes me feel worthless. I'm trying not to feel so inferior. Like, I, I, like, to, I like to feel that I matter. Um, and sometimes I'd feel that I don't. I decided I need to change things and I hope to get married and I hope to find that special person and I hope to have kids and hope to have a family. I haven't found that person yet, but like I said, I hope to. And there's a lot I want. There's a lot I want out of this life. If I if I could choose everything I wanted, I guess I'd be a, a very davishly good-looking playboy, going from one girl to another girl, but in the end, I just want to rather have somebody I can marry and maybe grow old with. Because to me, that's a beautiful thing. Ooh, okay. Ooh, immaculate. Yes. Oh, and the drawers are closed. There's not underwear hanging out. <laughs> There's no candy wrappers on the floor. And no coffee cups with green mold growing in them. And no dead uh, bodies under the bed. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, I like it. I like it. This is the laboratory. <laughs> oh, okay, what all happens? Mm. Brad, our oldest, almost died after childbirth, a day or so after childbirth, with convulsions, you know, because of. Um, it's a breech birth and everything, and they had it's a difficult birth. That probably caused some damage. He survived, and Brad is doing well. He's got a weight problem, and I worry about that because he won't watch what he eats. And I have to work, and he stays at home, and I can't be with him 24 hours a day. I'm a, 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 a string of bees in uh, 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 rural America, living, uh, trying to eat the world, eat more healthier, so trying to be, just be more healthy, healthier and live longer. Because my mom uh, died at 59, and my grandmother died at 59. And this uh, was an uh, old music box I got from my mother huh? when she died. This uh, kept it up here. She's in heaven and she always looked down. Huh? So, 
I mean, I kind of grew up with a father, but I always had two loving mothers. So. Hmm. There was a period of about seven or eight years I was totally estranged from my children. I didn't talk to them. I had no contact with them. This was due to their mother. She didn't want the children to be around me. Those were very painful years. Emotionally, I was just a wreck. I wanted to see my children. This picture was us. It's filthy. This was, it's a little damage right here, but this was us, uh, 1994 Thanksgiving Day. I missed my dad for a while. And, um, it'll always stand out as the most important Thanksgiving to me, because it was special. Um, you know, it was, we hadn't talked for years. It was like rediscovering my fa my dad or my, my father all over again. I had wondered why Jerry wasn't a part of my life. I guess part of me was wondering whether or not Jerry still loved me. And um, part of it I didn't understand was that our mama did not want Jerry around. Once I really got into the cross-dressing and living teetotally as female before the surgery, then, of course, that's where the visits were suspended. I don't know. I just, I guess I thought that your life was just so important that you couldn't take time out to see us, you know? Well, apparently she never didn't explain. Yeah. She told me just before she died that she still loved you as a friend. Did you know that? You have to know that your mother was, was in her own way a very special person. You know, Mama, when you weren't there, she had to try to, she tried to play mother and father. Which I know wasn't easy on her, you know? Yes. Especially when you weren't there. That's right. There's in no way, possible way I would ever have deserted you. I never would have deserted you under any circumstances. I don't know, I guess that I hadn't called you dad in so long. Mm -hmm. That's what was really depressing me because in a way I had missed you. Like, I had yeah. missed calling you dad. So this is what, our new balance is right here. Hopefully next week's gonna be good. I own a small mobile locksmith company. Jerry handles all my accounting. In a lot of ways, we may not have the typical parent-child relationship, but um, I think it's a good relationship. I remember the first time hearing that, you know, dad was moving out. And I don't even remember how old I was. I do remember saying that, well, if that's the case, I'm gonna go live with dad. And it was explained uh -huh. to me that that wasn't possible. Wade cried. He took it really hard. And 
it, bro it, it just broke our, both our hearts. I was either just getting out of high school, maybe it was my last year, the first time I'd seen her again. I worked up at the food court at Metro Center at the pizza yes, place. Yes, you did. <laughs> and uh, Sabaros. I, I think maybe why. it was the first time I'd ever seen her dressed as a woman. And I have to admit, first playing eyes on her after all that time, it did take me back a little bit. I didn't know how to react. And I, th I think she didn't know either. It was kind of awkward. You know, she came up to the counter and said, hey. And I said, hey, back. I mean, we got the door open, but it was, a, it, was, it was kind of a strange day. But I'm glad she did. My kids, Nick and Trinity at this point do not know because they've always called Jerry Grandma. How do you tell your 14-year-old and your soon-to-be 13-year-old daughter that their grandma is technically speaking their grandfather and that your actual grandma has been dead for years? I would love to tell them just to be honest with them, because I don't want it to be like my mom never existed. Because Nick has asked about my dad a couple times and I've deflected the question because I wasn't really sure what to say. Son, you already met my dad. You're over there most days. How do you wrap your head around that, you know? At 14 years old. Come from the long line of Joneses, baby. We know there are just almost an extinct species. I'd like to go to my grave knowing that you're finally going to get married and have beautiful children, John's children, that will carry on the family name. Me? Yes, yes you, Nick. Yes, you, Nick. All right. It's cute. In my family, you're the only Jones. Come on, come on. My brothers didn't have any Jones grandsons, but I did. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and this food. On Jesus' name, for his sake, amen. It's not comfortable when you are hiding something from people. It preys on your mind every day, and you worry. At first, I was uh, really scared. I thought, oh my God, you know, how are the grandchildren going to deal with this? Uh, they, I'm going to be rejected, or are they not going to want to see me anymore? And I certainly don't want to put an extra challenge on them. I know how cruel your peer group can be when you're like an adolescent in high school. I went through all of that bullying, so I want to spare them that. You can do whatever you want here, basically. You usually hang with my uh, homies. I mean, I know the homies are down there right now. I usually uh, run around here, walk around here. I do what I plan to do. I mean, it's not the best place, but you make a lot of friends here. I mean, I might join the military, I don't know. It's just, I, I still gotta think about it some more. You know what I'm saying? Good morning, 
jumped in and said, good morning, Good morning, I grew up in Mississippi, which they called a closed society at that time. We had the segregation system and all of that going on. It was a scary time to be different. I don't mind working, Captain from sun to sun. Grew up in a big old farmhouse out in the country, and, and my dad had cotton fields and corn fields. I had two brothers and three sisters. We didn't have anything uh, materially much. I was aware very early on that uh, I was expected to behave a certain way, that boys dressed and acted a certain way, and I knew I couldn't didn't feel comfortable with that. And I would go out to the barn and dress up in girls' clothes and play by myself. They were distressed about my behavior. I would hear them whispering and talking about it, and uh, uh, maybe we should apply, you know, a more stringent punishment. And uh, of course, years later, I had to tell them what was going on. And it was, I told them, they were very quiet. They didn't say anything, really. My father, he was dying and he had cancer and uh, I came to see him and I wasn't fully cross-dressed but my parents had changed a lot and he was just so happy to see me and um, he said I reached down and kissed him and I held his hand and he said I'm so glad you're here I said nothing else really matters but that you're here and that's a moment I remember This is my mommy and my daddy. Yeah. My mother wrote me a letter not long before she passed away, and in it she wrote to my darling daughter on her birthday, and that meant more to me than anything, and I still have it, and it was very precious to me. That was like, it's okay. I accept you as you are. That's what she was saying. Upset was that we hadn't been up in a while. <laughs> Wait a minute, Trent. You didn't, you didn't get nobody no hug. Trent, Trevor's brother, they are fraternal twins. Trent is schizophrenic with symptoms of autism. His mother managed to get him put into a home. But at that time, we were estranged, and, and, and there was a separation. So in a way, it was good news, but yet it was distressing for me, too. I, I see Wendy's over there. Yeah, we're just about on it. He loves Wendy's. <laughs> Don't you, sugar bone? Your brother was very sad that he didn't get to come and see you. Yeah. He was crying the other night. He was very sad about not being able to come up and visit you. He misses you. Okay? 
Yeah, Trevor had to work. Yeah. He had he he had no time to come see me. Yeah, he's had a life of his own right now, Trevor. Well, I hope my brother Trevor okay. Oh, he's okay. I told you, it's too fast. Don't eat too fast. Brain freeze. Told you, to eat. don't eat too fast. Not too fast. I go to a ballroom dancing class occasionally. I walk into that place and there's all these couples. They all have husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, partners, and I'm alone, so I stand out from the crowd. I would like to have an affectionate, intimate relationship with a, with a man, whatever the age. I would like to keep the door open and the possibility of that. It's difficult to, to really find a good solid relationship with, with someone. And then there's always the problem of uh, how far do you go without telling them about your situation, who you are, and how you arrived at this point. And, very often, you're going to get rejection, a lot of rejection. And, um, of course, before the surgery, it was more than rejection. It was almost uh, the threat of murder. What is it that God is? God is love. Brethren, one day we're going to be love. Now you might look at your own experience and say, I suffer. I suffer daily. But you and I, we suffer because of sin in our flesh. And I'm going to cause you to remember your own evil ways. I'm going to cause you to remember your former ways. The things you used to do. You know they're contrary to the will of God, and it's going to cause you grief. We shall be delivered. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. My religious beliefs and my faith is everything. There's people out there that would tell me point blank, you're going to hell. I just say, Lord, I don't understand it. I'm going to leave it in your hands. And, and you're the one who has the final answer. And that's where I leave it. I'm very, very proud of Brad of what he's accomplished, what he's able to do. He helps me keep house, take care of the yard. He is very considerate. And uh, hopefully I'm going to see uh, a drop in the weight.
I just kind of blame myself for doing this because I, I don't know how to eat a burger or fried cook. After a while, I started getting on this weight. Going to the gym, uh, uh, again. Trying to come more than I am. Yeah. My mother, uh, we were very close. But I do believe that when your loved ones pass, they do protect you. My ex, I met her in a beauty shop where I was working. She and I developed a strong bond as friends, co-workers, and I just adored her. I was obsessed with getting married and having children, and I wanted this problem to go away, and so she became the person I would marry. Within a year or two, I realized I was playing a role, that this wasn't who I was. And I wanted to please my parents. I wanted to please society. I wanted to be what they wanted me to be. And I couldn't. And of course, it broke her heart when I explained to her when all this came to a head and I told her. It's hard for me to forgive myself for it, even though I know I had to do what I had to do. She just gave up on herself. And she gained hundreds of pounds, and she was so heavy she could not get up out of a chair. And she literally killed herself over time. She forced Trevor to drop out of school, against my knowledge, and forced him to stay home and take care of her and wait on her. That did a lot of damage to him, and now he has to have somebody he can blame for that. He has to have a target for that anger, and I'm the available target. This is where we definitely saw Mama like, go down here. I need you more than anybody. Yeah. But towards the end, she just, her weight and her lack of mobility, it just, it just got very, very depressing. Yeah. Especially to watch that happen to somebody that you love. I don't know, I think at some point she just kind of gave up. At the time, I was just like, I need to get away from here. I think I felt like this place was suffocating me. And I know that sounds pretty selfish, but that's how I felt about it. And I was left being forced to take care of my life. First of all, I didn't demand anything. I asked you, and then you blew up at me. Will you stop, please, and listen? I've heard all this before, and you told me. No, you haven't. You think everything is about you. When it stops being about you, you get pissed off about it. Oh, God. What you are lacking in, Trevor, is compassion. I'm sorry, I am a damaged person. I have been to hell and back, and I am damaged. 
I try to understand you. I believe you. I'm going to be in a lot of pain to the day I draw my last breath. I'm going to be in pain. This is why we don't grow as a family because we don't talk. So you go on, you don't do the same thing you've done for generations, don't listen. I'm trying to tell you one little point. All right, what's your point? You shut me out sometimes when I'm trying, I'm, I'm literally at your feet begging you to listen to me. I'm hurting and you care, all you care about is what is going on in Jerry's fucking words. You don't give a shit what's going on in mine. That's why I'm so angry. Daddy walking out to the watermelon patch. He could always tell if he was ripe or not. He would just do just, you know. Sounds good. Yeah. Hmm. Trevor's going through a lot of things right now. Still, he's still in the process of sorting out a lot of issues in his life and his feelings. And um, so I'm trying to be patient with him because of that. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh, and it's uh, it's very hard because he can be very very abusive. He's angry. A lot of anger. He knows we love him. That's why we... Uh... I wasn't there for him when he was growing up like I was supposed to be, so he's going to make me pay for it for the rest of my life. This is a very toxic situation, and hopefully it's going to get better, but... I was already at the point where I was really depressed, really mad, and I knew what was wrong. It just, you know, got worse and worse. It's hard to describe. It's like, you know how when you blow a balloon up and your air, you know, just gets bigger and bigger, and you know eventually if you just keep on blowing, it's just going to pop. Well, that's what I felt like inside, like all this pressure I was about to explode. Till finally I said, you know what, Jerry, something I got to tell you. The truth is... I am gay, I don't care. I don't care really, you know, some people are gonna accept it, some people are not. But, um, it is who I am. Why well, I didn't come out years before, because my mother was a Jehovah's Witness, and she talked down on homosexuality. It was a sin, it was wrong, God frowns on that, that kind of stuff. And um, that's why I never could, you know, I never could come out then. Thank you. 
If I start crying, I'll never stop. So I have to keep the down under control. I've shed enough tears in my lifetime to fill an ocean anyway. Okay. Sweet old sister. How are you doing, Jerry? I'm okay. What's wrong? Every time there's a death in the family, either I'm not told about it, so I won't show up at the funeral, or either if I do show up, and during the eulogy, the preacher when it comes it comes to time to mention to read off the list of survivors, and I'm sitting there holding my breath, or I, oh, maybe they're going to get it right this time. And yesterday, at my sister's funeral, he's reading off the list of survivors. She is survived by her children, and he names them and lots of grandchildren and also she survived by her brothers brothers roger jones and jerry jones of pearl mississippi <sighs> they could not say her sister jerry jones so when the family went to him and told him to, to, to make that statement. Why do you love this obsession so much? Because it's disrespectful, it's patronizing, it's, it's degrading, it's humiliating. That's why. When we first got back together, it took us a while to learn how to use the word she instead of he. And maybe they don't want to give up thinking of you as their brother. Oh dear, what a loss. My little sister, God rest her soul, she saw me as her sister. We had no problems with it. It breaks my heart. I just wish the rest of my extended family could do that. I wish they could give me that kind of respect. Do you have boxing today? The, yeah. uh, the, you the do? collective uh, investigative efforts uh, of those uh, in the blog well, here and, and reacting to those photos had exposed that it was really a, a sloppy uh, Photoshop job. Uh, it's been an embarrassment. I used to be like I didn't give a crap about this family, but now I kind of I just decided to be nice. I would always wonder why he would always call Grandma Jerry and not Mom. Like that's weird. I was, she was my mom. I would call her Mom all the time. And why even Uncle Trevor would call her Jerry, and not Mom. I always wondered what happened to gram Grandpa. And Grandma, which Jerry, you know, would say that she got rid of Grandpa a long time ago.
my grandson has begun to ask his father, who was your dad? Because you never talk about it. And Trini, my granddaughter, she's very quiet. She keeps her thoughts to herself. It's just very difficult, very difficult. That's what terrifies me. I'm going to grow into this very old, decrepit person. My grandchildren won't speak to me. And that's a terrible thought. That's, I would do anything to prevent that from happening, but I don't know what I can do. It's heartbreaking. Mm. So I don't know. Know in the back of my head that my bedroom's a complete disaster depresses me because it's like my sanctuary. <sighs> when I came out, I hadn't been with anyone, male or female. I was 36 years old. I didn't want to be the 40 year old virgin like in that movie where the guy waited until he was like 40 to lose his virginity. I didn't want to be a laughing joke, but it also, uh, and it was also the fact that I finally lost my virginity, but I finally figured out this is who I am. This, you know, it's something I had denied and I was finally able to finally come to terms with it. And the truth can be something that can either set you free or can destroy you. I haven't pulled this thing out in a while. This was a Mother's Day card I gave to Mama on Mother's Day. It said, thanks for being a loving, compassionate, understanding mother, and that's why we think you're the greatest mother in the world. <laughs> Going to her graveside and finally admitting to Mama that I'm gay in a way, would a way help me to get to let go of certain things. You know, I promised you to, that one day I would get married and I would have kids. I don't think that's gonna happen, Mama. Mama, I'm gay. I know you taught me that homosexuality was a sin and God frowns upon that, but I'm not sorry for coming out. Maybe we'll see each other on the other side one day, okay? Mama, so they just know I love you.
I'm glad that Mom never lived to see the, them uh, come out to her because it would have been hard for her, very hard. After what happened between him, her, and myself, and, and her and uh, the marriage and all, it would have been it would have been so too much for her to take. I think. I like to think she's in a better place now, where she has perfect understanding. She's been endowed with a heavenly understanding of things, and that she can understand now that she couldn't have here. Current being gay, he's actually been not happy. Yet. But I told Trev, you got to feel comfortable in your own skin. It's actually a gay pride uh, uh, bracelet, and uh, this is one of the ways I express myself. I had a dream while I was married, and I dreamed I had, had a child. Um, it, was, it, looked, it was looked like me. It was teeth and no more. It was actually perfect. And, and I always wonder what my life had been like if I was normal. I didn't have the problems I had. It's our nature to have a companion in our life. Because of my situation, it's going to be hard. I, I, I am not still going to try. I'm not going to give up. I'm doing just fine. I went out with the uh, the drag queen dude last night. It went wonderful, actually. Yeah, I'm still trying to wake up, but it was worth it, so I ain't worried complaining. <laughs> now that I've come out of the closet and my whole life has changed, I, I actually have a life, and I'm dating and all that kind of stuff, and, and I'm actually enjoying all this attention, you know I mean? Growing up, well, partly because I was, you know, the way I was treated when I was in school, which now I can probably see maybe they could sense I was gay and maybe had something to do with it, you know, uh, while I was picked on. But it made me feel bad about myself. But now I'm on some dating sites and stuff. All right, she tell me I'm handsome, I'm cute, I'm pretty, I'm sexy, I'm whatever. And I'm like, well, thank you very much, you know. After what happened to me, I would rather they have not had to deal with any of this, being different in any way. So it's not easy, but... Well, you know I didn't ask to be this way. Mm -mm. Because you know I fought this for years. Oh, yeah. He came out and started all his new life at the same age that I was when I started mine. He was scared to death I was not going to accept him. And I couldn't believe it. I said, sweetie, why would I not be there for you? You were there for me.
Hello, how are you doing? Alright, how are y'all doing today? Doing good. How about that? <laughs> Let me see, Trent. Uh, he looks like Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Yeah. Trent, you do a good uh, drawing. Trent, I didn't know you had that kind of talent. <laughs> He got a hat and an earring. Yeah. Mustache and beard right here. <laughs> okay. Hooray. All right, we need to take some pictures. All right. Put your arm around me like this. Oh, that's sweet. Okay. <laughs> In my Come pocket. Here. I'm here. Put your arm around me. At the singing Red Rush Hospital. Put your other arm down. Right there down. you go. Okay. <laughs> if I was a multimillionaire, I'd take him out of this place so fast and I would hire somebody to personally take care of him for me and give him his medication and everything else. <laughs> I can't manage him myself at home. If I could, I would have him at home. Chris is a really wonderful friend. I met him through a dating site. I think coffee's on there. Okay. And <laughs> they don't pick up the phone and call people anymore. They tweet them and twerk them and Google them and... All right, baby, do your thing. There you go. Yeah. There you go, now that's the kitchen. You don't keep me warm tonight, aren't you? Only if you ask nice. Even Martha Stewart couldn't do this. Oh. There we go. Now you. With the being head of house and the two kids and all that stuff, I'll yeah. probably still get a refund. You, you, you're still Those around. Or an the, income credit and all that other stuff. Yeah, you're still around the poverty line. See what I mean? So you're not going to, shouldn't have to pay anything. We just about got ourselves out of the hole that yeah. we were we were in. So just it's uh, about uh, back on top again. And, oh, I've heard people that know you say such kind and nice things about you. How hard, hard, hard you work. For a time there, I thought I was going to have to go get something for anxiety. But her faith in me has gotten me through a lot of this. My kids, well, they figured out that my mom had died just because of what they heard. So they were like, well, who is Jerry? And how is she really? I'm like, well, Jerry's my dad. It was a big weight off my shoulders because I wasn't sure how I was going to approach it. They probably could have handled this earlier. I think maybe it was me that couldn't handle it. Jerry's not perfect, but neither am I. She, she's been there. And uh, sometimes, you know, that, that means more than anything. They're great kids. I'm very blessed. They're very smart. But um, my family's everything.
I mean, there's no other way to put it. They are everything. It's, it's shocking. When I first heard, I'm like, oh my gosh, my grandma was a man. It kind of messed my whole viewpoint up with my family. I was like, if grandma is my mom's dad, so she, she, that means she had to marry somebody to have my dad. I would like to talk to them. Because I don't know much about my grandma. Probably help. They'll probably give me some answers. Just uh, my nerves, Brad. I've got to have some coffee. My nerves. Sorry, is just, got, I'll put some uh, coffee yeah, right here. My nerves is just, just right here, uh, shattered. Shattered. I just hope. I hope he doesn't turn against me, or this doesn't interfere with our relationship in any way. I hope he's he's able to absorb it and deal with it. Oh, that's uh, that's Jerry. That's 1973. Three, March. Play, yeah. a, that's April, so I was like not quite a month old. Mm -hmm. So that was grandma when she was a minor. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's mom. And that was, if that's March 5th, 73, that's when she's still pregnant with me. Yeah, she's pregnant with your dad right there. You can see she's pregnant with him. That's me as a baby. Mm -hmm. 14 days old. Yeah. yeah. Ah, now that, that's what, a teenager? Yeah, she's a teenager. Small mom is a teenager. She was <clears throat> not like my best friend. We worked in a beauty shop. We like girlfriends. This is probably what, about mm -hmm. the time y'all were married or? Yeah. <clears throat> and that was uh, me and her with Brad with before Brad. any of the kids were born. Wow, check that hair out. <laughs> it's the style back then, wasn't it? Yeah, this was the, in 1965, we was engaged to be married. Now that's uh. <laughs> It's a good picture of me, you, Brad, and... Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a headstone at my mom's grave. Where's the grave at? It's at uh, White Sands. She Baptist was... Church. 59 years old. 59. Yeah. I haven't seen those pictures. Well, I think I have when I was little, but I didn't know who that person was. I thought that was like an uncle or something, but now to know that it's my grandma. I'm like the only, well, she, she's my favorite grandma in a sense. She's got something special. She's a grandma pa.
gentlemen, wish to support Safe Harbor Family Church with your presence, your prayers, and your blessings. Yes. Yeah. Do you, as Brad and Trevor's new church family, wish to love them in Christ Jesus, and will you accept them where they are and pray for them? Yes. yes. I, as your pastor, will do the best that I can to listen to you, to pray for you, to challenge you, and to feed you the word of God that is in my heart. Welcome. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Harbor has taught me that, you know, God has a plan for all of us, and He made me the way I am for a reason. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No problem, man. I'm Clay. I'm Jerry. Well, how's it feeling on the official numbers now? Oh, it feels good. grow and spread out and we'll have tomatoes. Lots of tomatoes. I'm secure enough for myself now. I don't need attention at all. <clears throat> you know, it's nice to get it, but I'd like to have the right kind of attention. Positive attention. Went to this new Mexican restaurant out here. It's a real nice restaurant. And this waiter was, he was just, uh, you know, winking and flirting and, and Trevor got pissed off because they weren't paying him no, no attention. No, I wasn't jealous. I mean, he was cute. I'm not going to give him that. You acknowledge everyone there at the I'm table. I'm an old lady. I don't have any sex life left. My romance is gone. Give me a little break here. I need all the flirting I can get. <laughs> he was probably just patronizing. You bet it was fine. I need to be patronized in okay. that particular way. Okay. <clears throat> What about this song, Grandma? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey guys, look what you look at all day. Yeah. That's what you didn't say. Uh, that means. Oh, Take a look. Yeah. Guys, here, here's a song you might like then. Damn. Just a little down. I'm beginning to feel a lot closer to Nick. He does not make me feel bad about this. He's been there for me so far. I hope he always will be. Well, if you want to be a big hit with the ladies, that's what you should listen to. And my granddaughter seems to have the same regard for me as before. It's not just about us. You're, you're part of a, a larger picture. It's about our siblings, our parents, our ancestors, and it all contributed to who you are. And if there's enough love there, you can overcome. All right, so you're doing a box step. Back for slow. 
Here we go. Ready? And slow. Quick whip. Slow. Quick whip. Slow. Quick whip. Slow. Rock and wrap. Roll her out. I don't look at it like I'm approaching my expiration date and just sort of give up. I still challenge myself. I'm still in love with life and I'm still trying to grow up. I'm past wondering about it. I just try to be me. After all said and done, we have to be true to ourselves. We have to be who we are. Come what may. <laughs> Say la vie. There you go, there you go. Good. Look right up here for me. Mm -hmm. Good. Here we go. I've been practicing. <laughs> Good. Everybody's good. Y'all come a little closer together. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Good. <laughs>